Hi, this is Kenny Albert. You're watching the Power Play Break, the place to talk about pucks. Hey everybody, it's Chris Riley for the Power Play Break. We're here today at Champions in Uniondale, New York with John Forslund, the voice of the Carolina Hurricanes. John, welcome to the show. Chris, how are you, man? Great to see you. Let's go back early in your life. Do we have to? <laughs> <laughs> to Springfield. Yes, um, Springfield. You grew up there. Uh, yes. Where did your love of athletics come from when you started? Oh, maybe my dad. I, I don't, probably. I don't, I don't know. That's a really good question. It just kind of happened, so it's probably so far back that I don't remember where exactly that love came from. I know where the love of hockey came from, and I, I, I can pinpoint that exact day, but uh, and it wasn't just the sport, it was the, the broadcasting of the sport that, that really caught my ear. But, but certainly, I think as far back as I can remember, I guess is the way to answer that question. You played baseball, you played hockey, did you play every yeah. kind of sport growing everything. up as a kid? Yeah, everything, yeah. But you know, uh, that question always leads you into, did you uh, become a broadcaster because it was another avenue yeah. to pursue, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean, yeah. right? <clears throat> In a way, yes, because I wasn't going to be professional at. at I mean, you didn't sports. know, like you didn't know, like some of the other guys we've had on the show said, "Oh, I knew when I was 13, I'd be right. the NHL." Right, or... but I, I, in baseball, I went pretty far, and but but hockey, <clears throat> hockey for me was again, it was the broadcasting of hockey, the play-by-play -play cadence, listening to the games on the radio, watching the games on TV. I knew when I was eight or nine years old, I'd start telling people that's what I want to do. All the way through high school, when I was told by my guidance counselor, you know pick something safe because that's never going to happen likely, you know? Yeah. So that's really where the love of it came from. Were you a Bruins fan growing up big, in Western? Big Boston Bruins fan. Favorite player on the Bruins? Bobby Orr. Time? Bobby Orr? Bobby Orr. I mean, Bobby Orr had a, and it's funny, Bobby Orr had a role in where I'm at today, eventually, but Bobby Orr was my favorite player. Uh, Mother's Day 1970 when he scored that goal, I know exactly where I was. Uh, Fred Cusick was a huge influence in my broadcasting career because the Bruins back in those days, they aired every game on television, TV, TV 38. 38. Yep. And we had a parabolic antenna on the roof, and my dad went to Sears and bought a booster for this antenna, and we were on a hill, and he would climb up there in the middle of winter and <laughs> oh adjust gosh. it, and he'd have to adjust the antenna so that we'd get the signal. And then his buddies would come over and they'd turn down the sound and I would do the game and they'd sit there and have a few <laughs> beers and listen to me do the game. And the more they had, the better I sounded. So it was good. Talk. Um, was there a minor league team in Springfield at that yes. time? Yes. Yeah, the Springfield Kings. Okay? Mm -hmm. and they the played at the Eastern, Eastern State States Coliseum. Coliseum. The Springfield Kings became the Springfield Indians and they were for, forever the Springfield Indians. But in the late 60s, early 70s, they were the Kings. And in 1970-71, they won the Calder Cup. And on that team, the goaltender was Billy Smith. And the most valuable player was a guy named Butch Goring. Wow. And Butch Goring had mononucleosis and was sent down to the American Hockey League and came down and was like two points a game. And they were a Cinderella team that just got in. And then they roared through the playoffs. And Billy Smith was a gunslinger, as we know, mm -hmm. and fought everybody and was a spectacular goaltender. And you'd sit there as a young kid in that old building. It held about five, 6,000 people. And you just couldn't believe you know, what you were seeing. But uh, those two players went on to great careers, obviously, with the Islanders. But that's, uh, the, those are my early memories of watching games. Eddie Shore was there, and Eddie he used to Shore. yell at you guys all the time, probably in the building, right? So when you came in to watch practice, yeah, or yeah, we would go, we would go watch practice, and Eddie Shore would would kick us out and yell at us and call us miserable names. But then behind closed doors, he'd give us pucks, and he'd give us uh, popcorn, and he'd, he'd treat us. Uh, he was a nice man. He was a nice man. He had the purple Cadillac, the license plate said Mr. Hockey, and you know he was before Gordy Howe. That's he was Mr. Saying. Hockey, and he was he would park right in front of the building, and you knew when the old man was in the building. Now you go to Cathedral High School. I did. And you played baseball. You played hockey. Yeah. Um, who was your hockey coach at that time at the school? Well, a variety of people. It was kind of you know in and out scenario. And um, was the team good? Were you guys? Decent? They were better before, for before me. Paul Fenton played there. Yeah, that's what I. Yeah. And and that team was very good. But in those days. Western Massachusetts really couldn't compete with Eastern Massachusetts. They'd have a state championship, and it was never close. Even Paul's team struggled against Matinon, I think they played in the in the in the uh, in those days. But uh, that's a long time ago. But it was it was certainly a good experience. Now it sets you up. A lot of guys go away to college. You decide to stay home at Springfield and play yeah. baseball. Yeah. Um, were you excited to go to Springfield? And you thought maybe okay, now I'm going to go to school that's well, very geared towards athletics. Right. I wanted to be a, a PE teacher, and I wanted to coach. 
and I also wanted to do this. But again, I was I went to my guidance counselor, and we looked at you know broadcast schools like Syracuse, but it was a different world back then, right? Because ESPN came into fruition in 1979. Yeah, yeah. I graduated high school in 1979, so the industry wasn't as big as it is today, and there weren't as many opportunities. So I listened to her, and I had a good opportunity to go to that school. I had a great reputation. It's turned out a lot of people that are in sports today. And I went there, and it was an elective that I took at Springfield College, and the fellow that taught the course was a news director at an NBC station in Springfield, and he's the one that told me, if you get a chance to do this for a living, you need to do it because you have an ability that I don't think you're going to ever learn from anybody or through any book or anything like that, so go for it. So he was the guy that gave me my first boost of uh, inspiration towards uh, going for it. So you're at Springfield, you're playing baseball, you're a shortstop, tough yeah, position to play. played all four positions, yeah. Give me the scouting report on John Forslund as a baseball oh, player. I had a, I had a really good arm and I could field and I had the limited range. My foot speed was very average. Um, and I could D2 hit, at that I could, time, I right? could hit a little bit. Yeah, I could hit a little bit. So I, I was I was okay, but but it wasn't uh, you know I wasn't very. The Red fast. Sox weren't coming down to see you or anything. No, I mean there's a there's a couple there that was uh, <laughs> it wasn't that bad, but it was um, you know I was it was a decent player. I was a decent player. Now you graduate from Springfield, yep. and you head you head down here to Long Island where we are today to Adelphi for right. your graduate work. Right. Um, what made you decide right after graduation, I'm just going to go right to graduate school? Well, I had a, a fellowship. I had an opportunity. I met a gentleman who uh, oversaw the uh, sports management program at Adelphi, and they had a program where you could come down, uh, get your schooling, if you qualified, if you had the grades and so on and were accepted, and also work at St. Paul's uh, Prep School, which was a, a boys' school right here in Garden City. And they had positions within the football program, the baseball program. They're looking for coaches, so I coached there, and I taught school during the day, and I had my education looked after my graduate program if I did it in 15 months, and I and I did. So it was a full year plus a summer. I got it done, and it was within a time frame. And then I went on to uh, intern in the American Hockey League and start my career. When we get back, we're going to talk about that internship with the American Hockey League right after this.